Aloha again, Oddlyites. I'm here with yet another Oddly Analyzes video. Tonight I'm going to be talking about one important facet of Halo gameplay that may or may not be obvious when you're watching pros or even your friends play, but it's extremely important when it comes to staying alive or even making flanks, and that's breaking sight lines. When it comes to knowing sight lines and using them to stay alive or to get behind the opponents for that just perfect angle with the sniper rifle or your gun in general, there are a few better players to watch than Snipe Down. And he constantly shows in his gameplay how to use walls, pillars, other map geometry to keep his opponents from seeing him while he tries to get away or make his approach. And although I've already covered this game type, which is strongholds on the rig, I'm going to focus on Snipe Down staying alive or getting his flanks just by breaking the sight lines. And as a special treat, this is the first time we've seen the full Evil Genius roster assembled since Lunchbox has been on his honeymoon with his new wife. But uh, this we'll get to see them playing together for the first time, and let's see what we can learn. Even off the start, you see him like, using the wall to break the sightline from Sniper. Just gets into a 1v1 fight and wins. Right there, he used the rail as he jumped over to make sure he couldn't be seen by anybody on the left side of basement while he checked the right side before he dropped down to actually push into the left side. He starts charging up his rail gun before he drops. Pops APG sees Hysteria while he's reloading. You see it, just a small sight line where Hysteria would have barely been able to see him even if he was looking. Gets yet another railgun kill. Reloads, and he immediately starts looking for spawners. Gets hit by a grenade, and you see both people on the blue team are to the left of the wall, so the wall is breaking that sight line. And APG that you can see on the right side is behind yet another wall, so at the moment, Snipe Down cannot be seen by anyone. He thrusts back to the right, making sure that the wall on the right now breaks all three players' possible sight lines, and he stays alive. And here he drops, looking for a flank. Like here, he's low. The floor beneath Hysteria and APG are breaking the sightline from him, so the only player that can see him is unlegit. Except for maybe Frosty, but Frosty is over in Rail Corner. Unlegit breaks the sightline with the floor, Snipe Down switches to the pistol and gets the cleanup, and goes hunting for Frosty. Here, Frosty's sightline is broken by the floor. Everyone else is being blocked by this wall. Even if they move into nest, they have to get all the way to the stairs to where they'd be able to see Snipe Down. So he's hunting for Frosty. And finally pops out and gets the kill. And he's actually a little exposed to APG and maybe to Hysteria right here. But in general, this wall is still... This wall and the... The catwalk behind are still breaking off the sight lines for him to use. He turns and immediately charges Railgun, kills Hysteria, starts throwing grenades. Well, not, not a very good grenade. There is some grenades to weaken le unlegit. And goes back to basement. He sees Roy needs help, so he goes to help Roy. Gets popped by a grenade, and he's, he actually forgot to keep an eye on Basement in that time. So Hysteria actually got a shot on him. But you see him jump, knowing immediately those shots are coming from Basement. And that catwalk will break the sight line for any possible headshot coming from Basement. Because as you can see from where he is, there's no possible point in Basement that someone would be able to see his head. As he drops, he's, he's using this box to break the sight line, forcing the other player to jump and expose himself. 
Hostiles captured basement. Blue team scoring. He spawns right back into position to fight again. Here he spawns conveniently at time for railgun, but he checks nest, sees he gets popped from from APG down low, while he waits on the railgun. Here you see him peeking into basement. Important to note, you can see basement from just above sniper. This area is called the junction, and there's actually an ability to see the basement down here. So if you're up high and you know they're capping basement, you can actually look back to see if they're in the back before you like go go ham. Which he he gets the double and he knows camo's up, so he just immediately turns for camo. Really good camo eyes at a APG there. It was I'm actually gonna back up for just a second. To where snipe down drops, he gets hit by the grenade. And as he's in this fight, you see him immediately hug the wall. That because he's hugging this wall, there's the only way that he can actually be seen is if APG pushes into this hallway, which although snipe down doesn't have any immediate help, he's got someone above him. So if APG pushes, he overexposes himself. Instead, APG doesn't push, snipe down gets his shields back, and he's camo, so he's not showing up on radar. Important to note, you can walk in camo and not show up on radar. So he gets a flank, gets a railgun kill and a beatdown. Helps his teammate capture nest. He ignores the players in basement, which I'm not sure why he did that there. Here you see him back up so the, the floor blocks the sight line from Hysteria, so Hysteria would either have to jump or choose another route. Hysteria decides to leave him. Because Snipe down's camo, Hysteria can't be sure. And he gets right behind him, gets the railgun kill, helps his team secure basement. Here he's sitting, he used the corner there to where his head would not be exposed. He couldn't see APG's head, which generally should mean that that player can't see your head either. So he gets the body shots, which sort of leaves him in an advantageous position, even though he's got the low ground there, because APG would have to duck and expose his head to be able to see Snipe Bounce head. Instead, they just kind of dance around each other. Snipe Down follows for the kill. Challenge is there, not a common play out of him, not a good play in this case. Here he sees APG above him, just immediately goes for the one-on-one -on -one challenge because he doesn't see anyone else on the screen with him. But he falls and exposes himself to his area. If he had dropped down to the lower catwalk there, he would have probably stayed alive. Here. While he's capping the BR base, he's looking over at basement to make sure no one else is trying to fight him. He knows there's an enemy player in basement, so he's looking to be able to get first shot if that player tries to keep him out of BR base. Oh, wait, this is lethal. How did I get on lethal? Alright, back on to snipe down. I'm not sure when it swapped over there. Uh, theater mode kind of bugged out. Snipe down goes to help lethal. No one's looking at him at the moment. It's the double kill. Finishes the BR base capture. Which I, I've mentioned in the past I don't like this, but I'm not going to focus on the objective right here. We're just talking about snipe down using his sight. Here he uses the crate to, to block the sight line from Frosty while he's forcing Unlegit to back off. He sees 
He's using the pillar to block where Hysteria was. Like, Hysteria cannot see him. APG might be able to see his elbow and nothing else. And he's looking where he saw his teammate fighting Frosty. Unfortunately, a player gets a kind of lucky spawn at Railgun and shoots him in the other side. But Snipe Down does finish the capture before he dies. We lost basement. Blue team score. We lost B on base. We captured B R base. Here he's not really sure where anyone is. He must have had a call out that Unlegit was there. Uses the wall to break the sight line from APG. He was afraid to move because of the splinter grenades there. Because if you aren't aware, moving into their proximity makes the little additional bits detonate and deal extra damage. Here, really neat play by him to hop under this rail, hugging the wall. And you could tell he was aware he could see the bottom catwalk. So he looked for APG to help his teammate. Ten seconds to rail gun. Loses the 1v1. Uh, not much you can say about that. <laughs> and gets a convenient spawn right on railgun yet again. He He's managed to die at times where spawns will work out favorably to him to get to the railgun, which is kind of interesting. I don't think it's intentional, but if it is intentional, he's a genius. Captured nest. Blue team he's looking for someone. You see him catch Hysteria in the corner of his eye as he comes around the corner. Turns back to get him. Misses the shot. And here I'm going to play this really slowly because you see he's using this box to block the sightline from both Unlegit and Hysteria. And I'm going to leave it over the shoulder camera while I play it forward. You see him thrust away. He's trying to use that box to continue to block until he can thrust down here. Which now this area is continuing to block. Hysteria can't see him anymore. Unlegit can't see him. He's going to get away a lot. Unfortunately, he kind of exposes himself thinking Unlegit is alone, gets into a 2 on 1. But Lunchbox cleans both up, and it, captured they capture base. BR base because of it. Almost falls off the map. Goes the safer route, knowing his opponents are more on the BR side. So he goes back toward Nest before he starts challenging. He sees camos up, leaves, leaves that for his teammates while he rushes to get the basement back. He's waiting to see where opponents are here before he pushes out. He knows they're on the BR side, but if he pushes out, they find where he is and they can collapse on him and just use their team shot because he's got a teammate dead. And even though there's three, maybe four, like he doesn't know if there are four, there's definitely at least three. If he pushes out, there's no possible way his team can have a numbers advantage here. So he just slow plays it. He's just going to chill right here. Now he sees a player on his radar. Player pushes right past him without having any idea he's there. And he gets the easy flank kill. Shots into APG's back. He gets a double just by being patient there and not rushing. Now he gets another kill as he pushes around. Challenges on legit. Notice he uses this box to break the sightline from unlegit. While he gets his shields back, he takes a route up that he knows he'll have the sightline blocked until he actually gets up. 
and then as he clambers up, he can see unlegit on the corner of his screen, just barely off on the corner there. He turns, finishes the kill, starts capturing nests, and he's actually using the stronghold marker to block the sight line while he tries to capture the stronghold. Ten seconds to rail gun. And his team was down 30 points just a moment ago, and now they have completely closed the gap here. Okay. Used the. I'm gonna go back again to replay this triple. Here he throws a grenade while a player is capturing. I'm gonna slow play this. The. The catwalk is blocking the sightline of Frosty. He's only looking for unlegit right now. Get some side on him. There's a kill with a grenade. Everyone on his team damaged that player. Here, he f uses this pillar to block Frosty's sightline and to get around to where Frosty will have to push around the stairs in order to fight him while he finishes off the kill with APG. Like, if he stays here and just hovers to kill this to finish the kill, he dies to Frosty. So instead, he thrusts around. It breaks the sightline from Frosty. I'm going to keep it over the shoulder so you see this. Frosty has to overexpose himself, so he gets too far up to be able to back down from Snipe Down when Snipe Down just turns and finishes the kill. Great play out of Snipe Down. Triple kill for him. Reversal. I think. Yes, yeah, triple kill. And then his team can immediately turn and collapse. Unfortunately, their Snipe Down runs into lunchboxes splinter grenade which incinerates him so I've got to here he's just nading an entryway didn't thrust away from the railgun frosty gets a triple with the railgun big play here because that gives frosty's team control of basement this hostiles captured basement Blue team scoring. Here, lethal dies. Stereo wins the 1v1. Snipedown may have been able to back down there and stay alive. Right, I think he thought he had the 1v1-1. May have... Great double out of Snipedown. He's using the pillar once again to block any sightline Unlegit could have had. But, nades. And, Blue team. I believe Blue that's going to be game over. Roy dies. Lethal dies. That is game over. Game over. Evil Geniuses end up losing by a hair this game. Uh, but I managed to point out how Snipe Down uses... Just different parts of the map to break sight lines and keep himself alive, which is something you can take into your own gameplay and just use it to get better at Halo in general. You'll stay alive longer, you'll make easier plays as you get around opponents, behind opponents, or even just in the side to get you first shot, which is huge in Halo. First shot means there's a really good chance you're going to win the battle. And not as guaranteed in Halo 5, since players can thrust away, sprint away, run away, duck away, buff away, ground pound away. But in general, uh, first shot is important. Getting away using any kind of sight lines. Just do whatever you can to keep a player from seeing you if you are not in the advantageous position. And, uh, yeah, you'll, you'll see uh, massive improvements in your gameplay. And this is one of the things that makes Snipe Down, Pistola, all of these players so good at the game. It's how they use the map to their advantage, even in the smallest ways like this. So with that, that's going to conclude this video. Hope you all learned something, and aloha!